check in my shiny. I'm not super shiny. John Redmond, Power of Attorney, the show that aims to empower you through knowledge of the law. I'm Attorney John Redmond. And I'm Shauna Sanford. Well, it is that time of year once again, tax season. And I don't know anyone who's excited about that. <laughs> Nonetheless, taxes can be confusing and burdensome to think about. But our guests today will try to help clear up some of the confusion and pass along some important information that you need to know before getting your taxes prepared. What do you need to know about what you owe the IRS? How much do you owe and what can you do if you haven't properly paid your taxes in the past year or two or more? Certified public accountant, CPA Tom South will be joining us to answer these questions and many more. Today's episode will focus on personal income taxes and next week we'll focus on income taxes from a small business perspective. You know, there's just so much to learn and know about taxes and the tax laws are always changing. It's very important important to keep up to date, but there are a lot of options out there for people uh, preparing them themselves, going to a CPA, and we'll talk to our guest in just a bit, but you know, this is the kind of thing that can, people get sick over this kind of thing. Let me tell you, um, you think just because you um, get a W-2 from your employer, it's all easy peasy, even if you fill out what's called the 1040 easy, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a breeze. No, you want to be sure you're getting your standard deductions. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't have it so easy. People who are um, uh, maybe divorced and they right. share a child, right. who gets that standard deduction on that child, that can amount to a lot of savings on taxes, maybe for one parent but not the other. Uh, and, and a lot of people, their taxes are a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. And that's the people who are filing on time and have their paperwork. There's a lot more complicated for some people who maybe they didn't file their taxes or they owe money and they haven't paid it. Right. What about the penalties? A lot to cover here. A lot to cover here, and we're going to get to that all. That's coming up. We're going to talk with certified public accountant Tom South, so be sure to stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello everyone, welcome back to Power of Attorney. Now what we're talking about today is just a tiny little five letter word, but it can cause big problems and major anxiety. That's right, we're talking about taxes and our guest is certified public accountant, Tom South. Tom, it is a pleasure to have you here. Um, I know this is a busy, busy time of year for you and it's the, kind of, it's the time of the year that can cause a lot of anxiety for a lot of people. It is a busy time of year, but it's the best time of the year to get out the information that everybody needs with right. regards to income taxes. So right. it's a, a great topic to cover as we get into the filing season for the 2012 tax returns. Well, let's just start with something very basic. Who needs to file a tax return? Basically, everyone needs to file a tax return if you have earned income. And as you know, there's various filing statuses. There's married filing jointly, married filing separate, single, head of household. So the income that's earned and I use earned and un unearned income, passive income, determines how much individual income tax you may owe. As you know, there's a personal exemption on every return, mm -hmm. and there's also a standard deduction or itemized deductions that you may tax, uh, take. Specifically, if you had taxes withheld out of your W-2 for the year and you fall into a single category and your income is, is below $10,000, you should definitely file and get those taxes that were withheld out of your W-2 wages as a refund. Mm -hmm. And you may qualify for other credits also. So you may get some money back to you that Absolutely. was held out of your paycheck. Yes. And, and a W-2, that's, that's a 
piece of paper that your employer, that's people who are employees paid by other people for work, not self-employed people, right? Correct. Self-employed is a totally different uh, type of tax return to be filed. And uh, again, depending on the, the filing status and the number of dependents you have, as you know, there's several uh, refundable tax credits, the child tax credit, the child uh, Tax the child care credit, uh, earned income credit is a big one. As you know, the the uh, limit for earned income credits were raised this year. So, in addition to the taxes withheld on your own W two, you may qualify for a larger refund. Well, that's why you're here today. <laughs> you just confuse me. So, to, starting very simple and very basically, when uh, you're a you're a wage earner, you're employed by somebody else, and you make a certain amount of money, and you're approaching the time when you got to file your taxes. You know that if you have certain exemptions, which means you get a credit, you don't have to pay taxes on some certain chunks of money. Explain what are some of the most important deductions people need to remember to talk about with the person who helps them prepare their taxes. Okay. Let's break it down into two specific categories. An individual that can itemize is entitled to certain deductions. Medical expenses in excess of 7.5% of your adjusted gross income could be a deduction. If you pay medical premiums, that's a, a large uh, uh, tax deduction also. Right, well, let's, let's just make it in digestible bites. 7.5% of your adjusted income. So if you make Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. If you spend more than how much is seven percent of ten thousand? Seven seven fifty. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. If you spend more than seven hundred fifty dollars on medical bills, everything above seven hundred fifty dollars is a tax deduction. Maybe tax deductible, yes. All right. Because there's a limit on the uh, standard deduction. You can either take the standard deduction on your tax return or the itemized uh, tax deduction. So that's the first one. The next is state income taxes paid okay. uh, on your individual earned income. Off of, your, off of your W-2. If you own a piece of real property, the real estate tax is paid. And if you own a piece of real property, the mortgage interest paid on that mortgage, plus any mortgage insurance protection premium that you may have paid, and also charitable contributions. So all of those items added together have to exceed the standard deduction before the first dollar becomes deductible. Okay. So does, what about my level of income? Does that in any way determine whether I need to itemize? No. Uh, the level of income has no nothing to do with whether you can itemize. It does affect you in, on, with regards to if you are able to itemize and do some of your item, uh, itemized deductions get phased out because your income is too high. Mm -hmm. There are limitations on itemized deductions uh, with regards to income if your income is too high over a certain limit. Is that the kind of information that has changed over the years? Because I know there are so many changes to the tax laws. The overall changes in, in the tax law specifically with itemized deductions haven't changed a great deal for the 2000 filing se uh, season. As you may remember, the 2012 filing season is going to stay basically the same as the 2011. We're going to get into some changes specifically in 2013. And, and the uh, taxpayer uh, act that was passed on January 1 of 2013 will outline those specific changes that we have. Okay. Well, I want to get into that, but let's remember a very important deduction many people uh, can use and that is uh, uh, the dependents if you have children yes. or children that you are responsible for upbringing. Yes, absolutely. A very, very important uh, deduction. If you remember, if you as a taxpayer, you get a personal exemption for yourself. If you're married, you get a personal exemption for your spouse and the number of children times 3450 or the personal exemption amount three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars the is the personal exemption you have that reduces your taxable income and again let's just use the uh, let's use a hundred thousand instead and let's say that you have uh, five dependents you have sixteen thousand nine hundred and seventy five dollars worth of personal exemptions that come off of that hundred thousand dollars first before the first dollar is taxable but before remember if you're taxes. divorced and the kids live with one parent, yes. uh, it depends on uh, various factors who gets to use that credit or mm -hmm. that exemption for the children. Yes, it does. And uh, is, there, is, it, is there an automatic way to determine who gets the deduction? It's usually determined by who, this, who the dependent lives with. That's the first test we look at specifically. And there's also waivers that we can sign inside the tax return to allow one spouse that could claim the dependent child to allow the other spouse to uh, claim that child. The two parents can agree amongst themselves Correct. who gets to use the Multiple credit. support. But if they can't agree, then there are other ways of yes. determining it. Yes. Oh, well, what if one parent violates that agreement? 
that happens quite often, regrettably. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever files first and claims the dependent, the other, the other spouse has to go back and prove that they were entitled to the Internal Revenue Service, go back and prove that they're entitled to take that dependency, as, dependency exemption. And they have yeah. to amend the spouse's tax return that uh, took the dependent in error. Yeah, and I imagine that that can get to yeah. be very complex and very, take a lot of time. Very, very complex. Now, what about situations, because I know there are grandparents, there are aunts and uncles there who have taken in children who are keeping them, but haven't maybe le don't have legal guardianship. Mm -hmm. How are they able to take advantage of uh, any deductions, or can they? It, 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 they can. It, well, the dependency exemption is going to be a very difficult one. You know, the relationship ta test. If they are a grandparent or aunt or uncle, yes, they pass the relationship test. There's five tests with regards to dependency exemption. Support being the the major yes. one specifically. Mm -hmm. And do you live in the household? Do you supply a place where this individual lives on a permanent basis? Same mm -hmm. applies if you taking care of your elderly parent or exactly. maybe your elderly Great grandparent. Same, same applies? Exactly the same applies. Good. So when I come to you, you're going to ask me for what sort of documentation to prove that? We look at, under the new laws for 2012, we look at several pieces of documentation, school records, utility bills, uh, medical records. The, the earned income tax laws or the requirements for earned income tax this year has changed a little bit. Uh, because of that, just because of the situation that you mentioned, we want to make sure specifically that the person who's claiming the dependency exemption is entitled to uh, claim that dependency exemption. It's up, up to prepare specifically to ask these questions inside the earned income tax form that we have to fill out and, and verify with the taxpayer, yes, we are we are entitled to take this deduction. Okay. Uh, with your uh, agreement, I'd I like to change the focus. Okay. A lot of people, and I'll get calls, you know, personal injuries and insurance claims is what I deal with, but I'll, people call me because I'm a lawyer in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and they'll say, I got... Um, uh, a letter saying I'm being audited or I'm nervous, I haven't paid my taxes in three, four years. Uh, I always refer them to uh, either someone like yourself, a, a CPA who deals with tax issues or a tax attorney. What's, ad what's the advice that you give people who call you with these issues or come see you? That issue has become a, a very prevalent issue of late. Uh, two reasons. Number one, the, the BP oil spill has forced people into filing tax returns. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this, a lot of people just ignore tax returns. They think the problem will go away. The problem does <laughs> not sound like go away. Uh, I can definitely. It's bigger, bigger, <laughs> yeah, it's bigger and bigger. You it. can't put your head in the sand <laughs> with yeah. that. If yeah. you receive a, a, a letter that says you haven't filed a tax return, the first thing to do is get together with an, a CPA or a tax attorney, either or and file the tax return because the statute of limitations on a non-file tax return doesn't run and uh, start running until the tax return is filed. And as you know, there's a 10-year statute of limitation on the collection of taxes. So when you receive but it doesn't that letter, begin that 10 years doesn't begin to run until you file your file taxes. The, file the tax return. On, with the with the decreased resources of the Internal Revenue Service, we're, we're seeing in the tax world today more correspondence audits, where you file a tax return and something, do, you file the tax return and your employer reports a W-2 or your stockbroker reports a stock transaction, mm -hmm. and those two do not match up on the tax return, so the IRS writes the taxpayer, reconcile this for me. Tell me what the difference is. Well, they actually send you a list and say, this is your increase in tax, which usually gets the attention of the taxpayer, and they take the corrective action. It's uh, with, the, with the advent of increased compliance and matching that the IRS is, uh, has, I'm gonna say, enhanced over the past couple of years, it's amazing what they can match on a, a tax return is basis. It just, is it just people making a mistake or people being intentional about this or what? Not intentional. It's mostly mistakes. They lump stock sale transactions together and the Internal Revenue Service has the information that's reported in, on a line by line detail. Mm -hmm. So the IRS compares their line by line detail to what's on the tax return. It doesn't match. An automatic letter goes out. It's definitely not intentional in most cases. Mm -hmm. and same and because we're running short on this segment uh, time that is um, people who maybe they haven't gotten that letter yet but they know they haven't filed right. taxes in a while but the employer is reporting to the government that they've they've withheld social security tax they've paid wages to an employee. Is it better to come see you and go to the government before the government comes to you? It definitely is. We, we call that coming out of the coal. It's better to get together, file the tax return on the available data that you have. And also, the in, Internal Revenue Service has 
items that have been reported to them on a prior year basis. You can request a transcript and match their transcript against your records and file the tax return based on that transcript. Now, if there's a balance due, there's many ways to overcome the balance due. Okay, we're going to have to take a break. I'm sorry to cut you okay, off right fine. there, but that's okay. You can complete that thought okay. when we come back. Coming up next, we're going to take your tax questions, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tom Sell.